This is clearly one of the most important stories of the entire year. Tesla, well, I know I've used the term game changer before, but who would have guessed that this would have happened so quickly? That Tesla would have just made a giant leap over its competition. And frankly, the competition should be very, very scared. If you don't think this is a game-changing chess move from Tesla, then I don't know what is. Because frankly, my friends, this is absolutely diabolical for mainstream automakers. And it's happening a lot quicker than I thought it would. I thought this would be happening the first quarter of next year, but it's not. It's happening in the fourth quarter of this year. And it's why I cancelled my Tesla Model Y order, by the way, because I want one of these. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. And my name is Sam Evans. It's great to have you. What a fantastic day on planet Earth. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for being positive. Thanks for keeping the comments so positive and upbeat. So many of you have so much wisdom to share with others. It's awesome to see the naysayers. Fortunately, most of the naysayers stopped watching this channel a long time ago. As you know, I'm not a naysayer. The naysayers, you can all go to hell. I'm not interested in you. You know why I'm not interested? Because the naysayers do not build EVs. The naysayers do not build products. The naysayers do not build batteries. They don't improve battery technology. They don't improve solar technology. They don't improve wind technology. They don't improve the world at all. The naysayers do nothing but sit at home whining and moaning and criticizing, and that's all they can do. It's all their brains have the ability to achieve. You guys are not naysayers, and that's why I love you all. Frankly, I've got to say, just had a couple of new Patreon supporters come onto the channel. You guys are making this channel possible. Thank you so much for what you do. Could not do it without you. Same for the YouTube membership supporters. Those of you guys who are in the membership scenario section of this channel and support the channel through that avenue, thank you so much. By the way, if you want to be a member of the channel, I'll put a link in the description below. Gives you perks like you get access to some of our videos a few days in advance. Plus, I'll put a link to the Patreon page as well. Now, Tesla, it's just been announced that Tesla will be using a certain type of battery. But before we get to that, what this video is primarily about is the fact that it's just been disclosed that Tesla's new battery technology, its game-changing battery technology, is probably not going to be 4680 battery cells. Alarming, I know. And this is not clickbait. This is coming from... Media, widely released in China within the last few hours. Tesla has been working on batteries that use manganese. Now, I'm sure you're aware of that. But what you're probably not aware of is the fact that Tesla is not doing this, as far as we know, with ternary batteries. So in other words, Tesla's new battery technology won't be a nickel, cobalt, aluminium, lithium battery using manganese, right? It will be lithium iron phosphate batteries using manganese in the cathode. And they'll be coating several parts of the battery, apparently with other materials, potentially aluminium. This will give lithium iron phosphate batteries with an energy density that is almost identical or potentially even higher than current lithium ternary batteries coming from other manufacturers. This is a game changer because Lithium iron phosphate batteries are much cheaper than ternary batteries, don't require nickel, don't require cobalt, and using manganese in the battery, in the cathode, should allow Tesla to reduce the amount of lithium in the battery. Apparently, that's one of the key benefits. In addition to that, these kinds of batteries, well, one of the downsides to making lithium iron phosphate batteries is they do require more lithium, but they actually require a lower grade of lithium, lithium carbonate. So it doesn't have to be refined to the same level that lithium ternary batteries lithium needs to be. Now, most people don't, are not aware of that fact. 
but it does make the lithium used in lithium ion phosphate batteries cheaper than the lithium used in lithium ternary batteries. This is a game changer for Tesla in a number of ways. Number one, much cheaper batteries, much, much cheaper. Number two, batteries that don't get recalled all the time. This is what's happening to so many manufacturers, Volkswagen, Hyundai, BMW, General Motors, need I go on? All of them not using LFP batteries. Once was the world's largest battery company on the planet, LG Energy Solutions, or really LG Chem. Why do we call them LG Chem? Because they're just a big chemical company, unfortunately. That's the truth. So I never promote them on this channel at all. But I never promote them because they're not invested in LFP batteries. And that's why their market share has dropped massively over the past 12 months. It's down. Whose market share is up? The companies producing LFP batteries, BYD and CATL. Massive market share. I mean, BYD has gone from being the sixth largest battery company in the world to the third largest. CHL has gained market share over LG Chem. Why? LFP, right? Now, so now we know what Tesla's game-changing move is. LFP batteries using manganese in the cathode, giving the batteries a huge energy density. And of course, as you know, LFP batteries last around three times longer in terms of charge cycles versus ternary batteries. In the long run for Tesla, warranty, recalls, you know, all those kinds of issues with batteries that Tesla has had in the past will be much lower. Tesla know this. And I've got to point out the fact that I've been harping on about for a long time now, a year ago, Elon Musk said, what is the battery chemistry of the future? He got asked and he said, LFP. He knew then that Tesla was working on these batteries, but he did not let the cat out of the bag. Exciting news. Now, what is going on now? Well, Tesla is going to start using this battery technology, but it's going to be using it from CATL. CATL are making these batteries. They're going to go into Tesla vehicles in the fourth quarter of this year. But apparently, the plan from Tesla is to use these batteries from CATL, and then once they have started developing them batteries themselves, start to transition to using them from their own factories, from their own battery capability, capacity. That's going to take years, years and years. Why? Because building up 70 gigawatt hours of capacity, which is what CATL have in their factory down the road from Tesla, is going to take a long time. I think more than likely, Tesla will continue to use CATL's M3P batteries, which is this new battery technology, LFP, using the manganese cathode for many years to come. And what they'll do is, Start manufacturing the M3P batteries in companies such as, in places such as Germany and Texas. But potentially, that's my guess. We don't know that for sure yet. So what's going on this year? Well, first of all, I canceled my Tesla Model Y order because as I told you, hmm, was it five or six weeks ago now, Tesla will be using CATL's M3P batteries at some point over the next four, five, six, seven, eight months. I predict it'll be in the first quarter of next year. It's happening earlier than I thought it would be. The fourth quarter of this year, these are the batteries I want in my car. Why? Number one, they have all the benefits of LFP batteries. Longer life cycle. Can charge to 100%, discharge to zero without damaging the battery. Right? Less fires, less issues. And they have the same energy density as ternary batteries. So to me, these are the perfect batteries. Reports are the Model Y could have a 700 kilometer range with these batteries. And that would make sense. If you fit an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack to a Tesla Model Y long range rear wheel drive with energy density of 230 watts per kilo, yeah, you're probably going to get close to that range, especially if it has Tesla's Giga Castings and its structural battery pack, giving it a lot of weight. Reduce should reduce the weight in theory by around 200 kilos. Now, how do we know all this is happening? Well, we know it because Dynamic Company has said it's putting 110,000 tons of LMFP material into production in the second half of this year. Now, CATL's M3P batteries, according to CDNPost.com, are doped with lithium turner materials and LMFP materials, a solution that solves the problem of short cycle life and high internal resistance of LMFP batteries, as noted in late post report. M3P batteries use the olivine structure of LFP as the base lattice structure 
by doping two of the metal elements such as magnesium, zinc and aluminium to replace iron at some points in the battery, according to a research note by Shen Gang Securities late last month. Now this design generates a phosphate system of turner materials to improve charge and discharge capacity and cycle stability. Now it's said by Chinese media that CATL's Model 3P or M3P batteries are already in mass production and will be put into use next year. But now reports are coming out saying that it's happening earlier than we thought. It's coming in the fourth quarter of this year. This represents around a 30% energy density improvement over current lithium-ion phosphate batteries. And it really does give Tesla an advantage, a massive advantage over the competition. However, I mean, to me, the big news here is that Tesla have been working on this product themselves. They have been working on lithium ion phosphate batteries using a manganese cathode. Now, I think there's more information here about Tesla's battery chemistry than has come to light so far. We don't know yet other changes to the LFP battery structure. We don't know yet how many of these batteries Tesla plans on producing. We don't know where they plan on producing them, but we do know. We do know from past reports and from what Elon Musk himself said was that Tesla was working on new batteries using manganese. Using manganese enables you to significantly reduce the amount of lithium in a battery. This means the cost of the batteries to Tesla is lower. The cost of the batteries to CATL will be lower for the initial batteries that Tesla will be using in their vehicles, right? CATL using the manganese, reducing the amount of lithium needed, that enables the cost for CATL to be lower. And I'm guessing the cost for Tesla as well. In theory, as well as that, the fact that CATL are going to be producing 70 gigawatt hours per year of these batteries in the new factory that they've just built for to supply Tesla three kilometers down the road from Tesla's factory in Shanghai is insane. What will all these batteries be doing? 70 gigawatt hours is enough for like, what, a million cars, an insane number of cars. Well, we know that. Tesla is expanding the factory at Giga Shanghai. They're already at a production rate of 1.2 million vehicles per year. As of the time that you're seeing this video, 7th of August is when they'll hit an annualized production run rate of 1.2 million EVs per year. But Tesla plans on doubling or nearly doubling that to more than 2.1 million EVs per year by the end of next year. And Tesla Rati has just reported that Tesla's Giga Shanghai expansion project has moved forward with new approval. So all these batteries, all these new lower cost, higher energy density batteries will have cars to go into very, very soon. A portion of Tesla's manufacturing expansion project was officially commissioned by the Shanghai Municipal Bureau of Ecology and Environment on July the 22nd, nearly a month after Tesla completed the construction of the second phase of the project. Not many people have heard about this, right? This is really exciting stuff. Documents show Tesla completed the line expansion upgrades on the 30th of June, with commissioning set to be the only step left before production could begin once again. Now, the project includes production processes such as vehicle stamping, welding, painting, and final assembly. After the project is completed, the production capacity of pure electric vehicles will be massively increased. And that goes for both Model 3s and Model Y vehicles. However, in addition to these production line ramp ups, Tesla is going to build another factory right next to Giga Shanghai, basically doubling the usable space at Giga Shanghai. Doubling. What are they gonna build there in that factory? My view is this is what's gonna happen. Tesla will begin manufacturing the Model A or the Model 2 at some point next year at this new Gigafactory next to the Gigafactory in Shanghai, where they'll be using these M3P batteries in the Model 2 or the Model A. That will reduce the cost of those cars, enable Tesla to sell a $25,000 EV. Not only will it be an affordable EV at $25,000 for the base model, it will have a longer range that we would have previously predicted thanks to these increases in energy density from these batteries. Additionally, I predict this car will have structural batteries, right? And gigacastings, meaning the weight will be lower and it will possibly enable Tesla to use less batteries per car than what they otherwise would have needed if they had have been using lower energy density batteries. This will mean 
reduction in cost to Tesla, reduction in cost for stamping. Obviously, gigacastings reduce cost, plus structural battery reduces cost, plus this new lithium iron phosphate battery with manganese cathode will reduce the cost, meaning Tesla will have a significant advantage over all of its competition. I don't think there'll be another company outside of China that will be able to produce a car this good for that price. But that's just my prediction. And I could be wrong. Maybe I am. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Either way, this news from Tesla is fascinating. This new battery technology is a game changer. And the fact that Tesla will have two means of getting this technology from themselves, from their own internal production within the next year or two, and from CATL in the meantime, between now and then, or now in 2025, is insane. It gives them enormous capacity to grow, and it gives them battery technology that is clearly a step ahead of the competition, meaning everyone else. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.